Hey everyone, welcome to Solar Punk Station, where we're building regenerative futures. I'm Navar, and today we're going to talk a little bit about everyone's favorite subject, land use. As we're starting a zoning code rewrite here in Charlottesville, I've been thinking a lot about the big picture when it comes to both our city and cities in general. I've been involved with bicycle advocacy here in town for a while, and I felt that was definitely something worth fighting for because cycling, walking, and other active forms of transportation are beneficial for both the environment and human health. When you look at bicycling in the United States, you have a bimodal distribution of users, people who have to cycle because that's the only option they have to get around, and people who choose to ride. The more I've worked in transportation, the more I see that we need to seek synergies when we're fighting for equitable, sustainable solar punk futures. Poverty and homelessness are often portrayed as the fault of the poor, the result of laziness or bad luck. The truth is that the systems built into our society and built environment put up barriers to certain groups of people that are easy to overlook from a privileged perspective. How do we start to see things as systems and not a collection of isolated parts? We have a template here in nature. In a natural ecosystem, there's no waste, just an endless flow of energy and material from one organism to the next. What if we started to look at our cities as ecosystems? How could we build synergistic effects between parts of our built environment? Take a city park as an example. In traditional design, you select a plot of land, stick some trees and grass here and there, and call it a day. You might go so far as to add some playground equipment if you're putting it in a residential area. Approaching a park from an ecosystem perspective, however, would allow for a much more vibrant community experience. We have a park here in Charlottesville that isn't reaching its full potential because while it borders two different neighborhoods, a busy street separates one neighborhood from the park. Parents don't feel safe crossing with their kids, so they don't go to this park. If we took the whole ecosystem into account, safe crossing to and from the park would have been an integral part of its design. As discussed extensively in The Nature Fix, exposure to nature is immensely beneficial for mental and physical health. Poor design has a tangible, detrimental effect on equity. Taking things a step further, the green space of parks also affords an opportunity to work on sustainability. Charlottesville is in the Chesapeake Bay watershed and has an important role to play in reducing pollution that flows into the bay. In addition, stormwater management is becoming an increasingly important aspect of urban design as climate change makes storms more variable and rainfall is less predictable. As a way of integrating ecological density, we could add native plantings to encourage pollinators as well as rain gardens and permeable pavement for managing stormwater. By taking some additional steps in the design phase of a project, we enhance the equity, sustainability, and beauty of the city all at once instead of requiring separate projects to achieve a less resilient and integrated design. The same approach could be used when approaching transportation or housing. Taking the system as a whole into account when making planning decisions will allow us to do the most good with our limited community resources. What opportunities are there for ecological systems thinking in your area? Let us know down below in the comments and we will see you all next time. If you like this video and want to support this channel, you can go ahead and check out the camaraderie link down below in the description. And I'd like to give a special shout out to supporters Cade and Ryan for their support.